Yeah, there is another country that I wanted to move on to that has str struggled with socialism. And I know that this is one that you have spoken on, you know, pretty extensively in the past, and that is Chile. Uh, if we look at this very polarizing socialist president, Salvador Allende, uh, we do see that he is hailed as a hero by many people on the left. Uh, this is a presidency that saw widespread nationalization across many industries. Uh, the government seized well over 1,000 private farms, for example. And I mean, what I'm saying here is that, you know, his very infamous successor, Pinochet, you know, he is widely and rightly condemned as a dictator, but Allende's policies laid the foundation for that dictatorship beforehand. So, for example, if we look at, you know, Allende's presidency, there were still abundant shortages and there was enormous inflation towards the end of his presidency. Uh, but still, there are many people on the left who put that aside and consider Salvador Allende to be a hero. So how would you explain to these people who hold these particular, you know, biased beliefs that his leadership was horrible and not really any better than Pinochet's to begin with? Yeah, it, it's it, it's really mind blowing, you know, kind of with Tanzania, like we just talked about, that they view this as a success. But Chile, of course, is a much more well-known one. Um, people rarely talk about socialism in Tanzania, but they talk a lot about Salvador Allende. You hear all about it every year on 9-11. They say, oh, the, you know, there was another 9-11, the first 9-11, <laughs> and they praise Salvador Allende. You saw it all over uh, Twitter. I, uh, there was one guy, it was some uh, mm, politician or something. I know Bernie Sanders posted something about it. There were some other people, I, I, I forget, you know, some popular figures, they were posting all about praising Allende. I have seen Jacobin it's, Magazine as well, praising him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's it's just, it's so odd because, um, well, actually, it's, it, maybe it's not so odd once you understand what happened. Uh, so Salvador Allende was supported by the KGB. They wanted him in power as a, uh, to, to form a puppet government in Chile. They supported his election. They funded it. He was uh, an informant for the KGB. Uh, he he came into power in 1970 um, on a technicality. He did not win a majority of the votes. Uh, he won uh, like 37 or something like that percent. Um, and almost immediately, like his whole idea is just flip everything around, right? Turn, turn the country into a full-on Soviet vassal state. Uh, the Soviet Union started sending them a bunch of aid, and they were, you know, paying him off to do certain things in power. Like you, like you said, he was nationalizing farms, trying to nationalize uh, industries, especially focused on the, the copper mining industry. And he wanted to completely suppress all political opposition. So he he was trying to um, make sure there were no private newspapers, private radio stations, anything like that left. They shut down several newspapers and radio stations. They jailed and tortured journalists who spoke out against him, and he let Marxist militant groups run through the streets completely unopposed, armed Marxist militant groups. And they would uh, abuse and even kill business owners, and he, he was totally cool with it. Right. Um, if you really if if people really want to see how terrible he was, they can read the Declaration of the Breakdown of Chile's Democracy, which was a, uh, a document presented by Chile's Congress. And this is sort of what led up to that that coup. Um, they they document how he was suppressing labor unions and suppressing, you know, the workers rights and, and whatnot. So, I mean, it's crazy why a, a socialist would support a guy like that. There was a lot of strikes happening because the economic uh, landscape was so terrible. So he was trying to suppress all these strikes, trying to um, get these unions to shut up. They were using violence against them. Um, he appointed Pinochet, of course. They say Pinochet is this big evil fascist. Well, who, who, who put him in the government in the first place? It was Salvador Allende. Um, and so, like, by, by 1973, when the coup happened, the entire country is in ruins. It's already a dictatorship at this point, right? Like, the idea that Pinochet introduced a dictatorship is just absurd. No, he just continued on, right? He didn't establish all these dictatorial policies. They were already in place. And this was completely acknowledged by the Chilean government through that document I mentioned. You know, and he was... 
Allende was so unpopular that a few months prior to that coup, there was actually another coup attempt that nobody knows about because it failed so badly. A bunch of a bunch of soldiers are like, we're gonna go kill Salvador Allende. Um, it was a big mess. They ran out of gas on the way there and had to bring their tank to a gas station, fill it up. Um, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of people involved in it. But once Allende heard about it, he ra- he tried to rally the the city to get behind him and protect them. He's like, hey guys, you know I'm your president. Come protect me. Nobody showed up. Nobody <laughs> cared. Literally nobody cared. When the actual coup happened, nobody cared. They hated him. They they were dealing with this economic crisis on a day-to-day basis, watching their wages plummet. Uh, real wages fell by like 50% throughout his entire presidency. And that's just, that's less than three years. That's insane. That's, that's absolutely absurd how fast he ruined things. And this isn't like looking at Millet where they say, oh, look, Millet is ruining everything. Look how high inflation is. No, 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 no. It's, it was, it's the complete opposite. Things were generally improving. And then everything plunged after Allende. It's it's the you, the trends are completely the opposite, right? Uh, so, like I said, the Soviet Union was behind them. There was actually a ship from the Soviet Union on the way to Chile to drop off a bunch of military equipment. And uh, when they heard about the coup, they turned the ship around and rerouted it. Afterwards. We know from the KGB's own documents, which, by the way, acknowledge that Salvador Allende was an economic failure and don't try to blame the U.S. for it. We know from their own documents that they wanted to establish a cult of personality around Allende. And so they started spreading propaganda throughout Chile that kind of brainwashed people into thinking like, oh, yeah, actually, Allende did a great job. And we still see the effects of that today because he's held up as a hero. There's a, a video um, from Second Thoughts, a big socialist YouTuber. Oh, yes. Um, I think it's his video on what is socialism. And he t- starts talking about Chile, and he's like, oh, uh, Salvador Allende made the wages go up and made inflation go down. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that, that is that. He links to a Wikipedia page. You go on there, and it sh- says the exact opposite. I'm like, where do you, where do you get this stuff? It's, it's just such nonsense. They think he has to be a hero because these seeds were planted everywhere. By the KGB, <laughs> you know, they everyone wants to talk about the CIA, they never want to talk about the KGB. So, I, I really I, I can't stand the rhetoric around Salvador Allende because he was such a terrible person, such a terrible, terrible president. But they continuously praise him 